What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? AJ Good here at the House of Masks, where we unbox and review cool stuff almost every single day, and we've got a special video for you. Ever since I got back from Colorado, and especially since I posted the two distortions videos that you guys have seen so far, everyone's been asking me what my scores were. Obviously, in those videos, especially if you watched the big distortions tour video, you can see that Ed was just handing us stuff left and right, and people really, really want to know what I left with. So in today's video, video, I am going to run you guys through every single score that I picked up at Distortions. So, disclaimer, do not go bother Ed, Marsha, Janine, or anybody from the Distortions team. This was a very, very special day, and I do not want them to be bothered over me getting stuff because everybody else feels like they should get a tour and they should have a bunch of free stuff. That's just not how it works. All you guys are going to do is bother them, and that is not cool. Think before you internet. Now, with that being said, we were very, very lucky to get the experience that we got and it was just a magic time that will probably never ever happen again. It was just meant to be. So I want to give a huge thank you to everybody over at Distortions, especially Ed. I think that he just really felt how special this was as it was happening and it was just really cool to nerd out with my best friends and Ed. It was a really, really special time and by the end of it, I think he was just as excited about it as we were. So with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and in no particular order, show off what we got from Distortions. So the first bag here looks like it has the most stuff in it and it mostly looks like masks so we will do this one first. The real special ones I will make sure to go into full detail about what they are and why they are so special. So first up we have got the smiley mask with the eyeballs. Now this is a mushroom head oddball I guess because I think it was only worn for one old school show by Little Dan and I don't really remember getting this. I don't I don't remember when Ed handed this to me or why, but I think it probably had something to do with the fact that it was a mushroom head oddball and it kind of fits into the whole Monsters of Rock thing that me and Ed have been doing over the course of the last year or so, shooting those videos about distortions pieces that ended up being used by rock bands. So yeah, nothing too crazy, just the first of two smiley masks that I got because the other one is actually used by another artist and when we get to it, I will explain that as well. But this is the smiley with eyes. We will set him to the side and move along. Next up, we've got a real cool piece here that I have never owned myself. This is called Sight Bite, and it is one of the old Distortions gore masks. I really, really love Distortions gore pieces, and I definitely don't have enough of them in my collection. I would love to add plenty of gore pieces to the collection, like Grizzled. There's a shotgun blast piece that I would love to get. There are just quite a few gore pieces that I would like, and Sight Bite is a good introduction into that side of Distortions collecting, because it's not too brutal. Like, obviously this is a guy eating his own eyeballs while they're still attached to his head, but those other pieces, like Grizzled or Blasted, are really, really graphic. And maybe in the future I'll be able to add those, but those are pretty rare. But until then, we've got Sight Bite here, and I really, really like this piece. Obviously, still tagged, and it is a vintage copy which is very very cool so I'm pretty stoked on Sight Bite one of the last editions that I was given by Ed at Distortion so that one is a really really cool piece next up we've got a mini monsters mask this is one of my favorite distortions pieces and definitely one of my favorite mini monsters what we have here is a vintage ghost and I do have one of these already but he's not in the best shape and this is yet another vintage copy in great shape I saw a couple that were kept in bags for trade shows and stuff I just got this out of a random box in the attic upstairs. This was actually the first score of the day for me at Distortions, and it's just one of my all-time favorite Distortion sculpt. This is supposed to be a ghost, and it doesn't look like much of a ghost to me, but if that is what Ed Edmonds sees as a ghost, then that is pretty demented and pretty spooky. So I really, really love this. Definitely a cool Distortions piece, and I'm glad to have one that isn't rotting or falling apart like I believe my other one to be. So, ghost. All right, so this one is a pretty special piece. This is a Distortions Unlimited Mini Devil, and we believe this to be the catalog copy. This one still has tags from Mexico, and it says Original Mexico Samples. So when Distortions had started sending stuff international, and they had companies in China, and in Mexico producing these masks. This is the original. This is the one that they would have sent back, photographed for a catalog, probably taken to trade shows to show off there as well. This is a nice, nice copy, and you can definitely tell that this is before the retooling because of the eyes and the nose. This has a much more sinister look than any Mini Devil that you'll see from the last 10 or 15 years, and this is a nice, super thick, solid copy. Obviously still has those tags on it, so this is real, real cool. And when Ed pulled this out of the box, if you guys watched the big distortions tour video you'll see that he was like 
I think you guys should have this and hands it to me. So another very special piece, one of my all time favorite distortions masks. And I've got the production sample copy here with me in the collection. So that's super, super cool. And yet another set of very special scores. We just have a stack of tagged and what was bagged until I realized I didn't want to carry around a bunch of bags. Original Run Liar Hats, and these are extremely rare, and I think I have six of them here. Six tagged and what was bagged Original Liar Dunce Caps. Again, these have just kind of blown up over the last year or so. People have really started to hunt for these. I don't really see the appeal. I mean, I know that they go with the liars, but I just think that the market has taken them to a crazy point that I never expected them to go for, and I refused to pay what people were paying for these, so I never got one until my buddy Bishop and Mike from Pale Face & Co. hooked me up with one, and then we end up going out to Distortions, and Ed finds a box of them and just hands me a big stack. So, super, super rad. Definitely going to have to keep those put up and in good shape. So, hell yeah. Shout out to Ed for that one. All right, so we are one bag down. We have one more bag of masks to go, and then there are some severed head props and some other little things that are very cool. So, first up, We've got this guy. I believe Mike was calling this knuckle bones, and clearly this is not an Ed Edmonds sculpt, and Ed actually didn't even remember producing these, so I'm pretty sure these were sent in by another company. They were sold in stores that didn't necessarily carry too many Distortions pieces, such as Party City, but they would have been produced at Distortions Unlimited, so whatever company originally did this design would have sent over a master, had a mold made at Distortions Unlimited where they would have then been cast, pulled, trimmed, painted, and finished at Distortions, and then sent out to different distributors, such as Party City, and the rest is history. Now, Ed was really unfamiliar with this piece and he just thought that the one that Cover ended up with was some sort of production sample but we ended up finding a few more so when we ended up stumbling across this other copy Ed actually offered it to Mike because he saw that Mike was interested in this and very knowledgeable on this piece and Mike said you know what I already have one but I think AJ should grab that one. It's pretty rare. And Ed handed it to me without hesitation, which is very cool. So it's a very Jason Part 6-esque looking mask to me. Definitely doesn't scream distortions, but I'm very stoked with it because of the rarity, the uniqueness behind it, and the fact that Ed Edmonds just straight up handed it to me, which is always a special thing. So there you go. Pretty sure Mike called this knuckle bones. So very, very cool. Moving right along. This is a very cool one that I'm stoked about. This is Shrivel Up, and this would have been yet another trade show copy or catalog copy. As you can see, this thing is completely uncut and wow, what a beautiful, beautiful paint job on that. It is also extremely thick and a lot larger than any other shrivel up I've ever seen. I have owned one of these and I've seen a couple other copies in person and this one is huge. Regardless, I got the trade show copy and this thing is absolutely gorgeous. I am slowly but surely collecting a lot of trade show pieces from Ed. Between the mini devil that you guys saw earlier in this video, this shrivel up which you are currently looking at right now, and a mini monsters mummy that Ed actually sent me probably about a year ago. I have started quite the nice little production sample artist copy, trade show copy collection inside of my Distortions Unlimited collection, which is super rad because these are really nice, very specific masks. So, shrivel up. All right, we've got yet another smiley from the little smiley line. There were three separate smiley masks. All right, speaking of mini monsters, we have a tagged mini monsters Frankenstein here. Just another classic Ed Edmonds sculpt, very blocky, very hand tailored to the way that Ed paints. I really, really enjoy the mini monsters line, and I don't know why I've never owned a Frank. It's really weird because it's a pretty easily obtainable piece, and it's not very sought after in terms of the mini monsters line, but I just never did, and Ed tried to hand me this, and I was like, Ed, you gotta stop giving me stuff, man. I, I literally can't take any more because I feel bad and also I physically cannot hold any more. And he said, don't say that. Say it after I give you this. And he just laid it on my pile. So, mini monsters, Frankenstein to add to the collection. Now, these next two pieces are super, super special. This is something that I found in the second addict. And as you can tell, this is a very very old raw pool of the second Mini Monsters Dracula. This is the one with the hair. 
Obviously quite a few differences in the facial features there, but I think that it was just a retool of the original mini vampire that we've all come to know and love so much. My all time favorite distortions piece, but I saw this in the second attic and was just kind of blown away. You can literally still see latex pieces that reflect the duct tape that was on the mold of the minivamp. And I don't know, I just really like this. It's still cast in black, which is something that Distortions hasn't done for a long time, so you can definitely tell that it's old. It just looks stoic. It looks like a concrete, like, gargoyle-type sculpture of the Distortions minivamp, and there's all these holes in it, which really add to the look, and uh, Ed probably just thinks that this thing is absolutely worthless, but when I found this, I was heavily, heavily geeking out, so he said, hey, Take it. Very, very cool piece right there. All right, so this next piece is special for many reasons. Now, obviously, people are going to see this and immediately think, oh, yeah, you got a liar from Distortions. But aside from the fact that this is a Slipknot-related mask, blah, 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 this is actually the last known vintage copy from Distortions Unlimited. We found this in a box in the attic, and you can definitely tell that it is a vintage copy. It is obviously a little warped here and will need to be restuffed and shaped, but how cool is this? Man, these vintage copies just look so special, especially compared to the new retooled with the longer noses and a slightly different paint job. These things just really stand out. So I'm very, very stoked to have that in my collection. Definitely cannot wait to get it stuffed and reshaped and hopefully back to normal. But yeah, the last vintage liar ever. Pretty cool. So yeah, aside from being a Slipknot related piece that I got at Distortions, it's also a vintage copy and the last vintage copy. So that is super rad. We were very excited when we pulled that thing out of the box. It's just a shame that we couldn't find a little more. So we are off of the masks. I think we have three more props and yeah, that's it. So let's go. I'll start with this guy right here, which is a Buckethead oddball piece. This is a prop that Buckethead used when he was filming some corn bugs related stuff with Bill Mosley. So as soon as I saw this, I was like, yo, Buckethead piece. But when Ed picked it up, he was like, man, something is really wrong with that thing. So we're sitting there looking at this thing, going over it, and Ed is like, yeah, something's really wrong with that. I think that that is a China production test copy that they sent over to see if it was going to work and it did not. And Ed was just calling out all kinds of stuff. The hair looks terrible. You can see all of the netting up there. The stump of the neck is glued to the outside for some reason. Just looks really, really goofy. And on the back of the tag, I noticed when I got back to the hotel room that he actually wrote all this stuff on the tag so that somebody could be told over in China, hey, you guys are not doing that right, fix all this stuff. So this is a cool piece of history. This was a flawed production copy from China who eventually ended up screwing Ed and Distortions over and now it resides in my collection. Just a nice little weird piece of, I guess, negative Distortions history, but Distortions history nonetheless. So, severed head, there we go. Also, Jordu shelf sculpt, never knew that. Ed said that he's pretty sure that this was Jordu's first sculpt for Distortions Unlimited ever. All right, next up we have Fat Head Zombie, yet another Jordu sculpt. You can clearly tell the difference between Jordu style and Ed style, and this thing is just a rad prop. We found this in a secret room in the second attic, and I just fell in love with it because I hadn't seen any copies of these ever. To me, it just didn't look like a Distortions piece, and I think that's because it was a shell sculpt. Regardless, I definitely fell in love with this the second I saw it peeking out of a box, and Ed was looking it over, and he's like, yeah, I think this thing just needs cleaned up, but uh, it's all yours. It's like, Ed, stop giving me stuff, man. You're too nice. Actually, I think literally in the video of him trying to give this to me, I looked at Bishop and Mike and I was like, he just keeps trying to give me stuff. Do I accept? And Ed goes, oh yeah, yeah you he accept. He just needs to be cleaned up. He just keeps giving me stuff. What do yeah, I do? Yeah. Oh, do I keep just, accepting? Yeah, you oh, keep yeah, accepting. Oh yeah, for sure. So, I did just that. Now we've got a Fathead Zombie by Shell Sculpture produced through Distortions Unlimited. Very, very cool. And last, whoo! but certainly not least my big score of the trip. This thing is very cool, and a lot of people might not think that it's that cool, but to me, it's real, real cool. So, this is Possessed. This is Distortions Unlimited Possessed. Obviously, this is an Ed Edmonds sculpt, and I just love everything about it. It's a really, really unsettling mask with the weird warped mouth that doesn't make any sense and the goo coming out, the weird cataract eyes. I just really love everything about this piece, and it's so spooky and unsettling to me that I actually have it hanging right above my computer desk. So this thing is staring down at me every time I sit down to edit, and it's been up there since I got the mask. Well, when we were were digging around in attic number one, I found the Possessed Master, and I was just freaking out over this because how 
gorgeous of a sculpt as this, and the fact that it's an old, warped, torn up master, not quite rotting, but still not in great shape, is just super, super creepy and very cool to me. So, I don't know how I managed to do it, but I said, Ed, are you using that anymore? And he was like, no, I can't use that. Take it. So again, I took it. And I was just dumbfounded that I was given a master of one of my all-time favorite distortions pieces by Ed Edmonds in the Attic of Distortions Unlimited. Just the ultimate nerd out moment for me. So, when we got back downstairs, I had Ed sign the back of it because this is definitely going to go in a shadow box of some sort, some sort of display case, and it is going to be cherished and loved and looked at forever because wow, what a cool piece of history with a cool story. So this was definitely the cherry on top of all of this stuff. Really, really stoked about this piece. I absolutely love this. And yeah, those are my scores from Distortions Unlimited. So with all of that out of the way, I'm going to set these guys out as nice as I possibly can, get them as filled as I can to show you guys just how cool all of this stuff is, hit you with some nice close-up shots of everything, and then I need to start building a Distortions Unlimited display for all of my Distortions collection. Right now, all the distortions masks that I have are split between like the possessed above my computer, the mini vamps have their own section, and then I have the rest of my distortion stuff either in the buckethead collection because it's a buckethead piece or above my television in the front room area. But that's going to change because after this haul, I want a lot of my distortion stuff together in its own little private distortions collection area. So we are going to have to start building something very quick because I want to get this stuff out on display and appreciated the way that it deserves to be. So with all of that being said, we are going to go ahead and close this one down. Thank you guys very, very much for watching. I really, really hope that you have enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and leave a like on this video. It definitely helps me out. And why don't you go ahead and tell me what your favorite score of this entire haul was? Drop that down below in the comments. Definitely looking forward to seeing what your guys' favorite piece out of this whole lot was. And another huge thank you to Ed, Marsha, and Janine over there at Distortions. Everybody at Distortions for making that trip so awesome. It was a great, great time. Again, don't go bother those guys over this stuff. This is not something that's going to happen to everybody that goes to distortions. And most people aren't even lucky enough to get to go to distortions. So it's just one of those things, like leave it alone. I really, really don't want Ed and Marsha and Janine and anybody over at distortions being bugged. So just leave them alone. Now, with all that being said, I am going to stop talking. My voice is literally becoming chorus as I'm talking. So until next time, thank you guys very, very much for watching. This has been AJ Good at the House of Mass telling you to say no to drugs and alcohol and yes to Distortions Unlimited. And we'll see you guys in the next one.